Business for South Africa on Wednesday warned that the escalating medicine supply crisis in Guazulu Natal has the potential to destabilize supplies not only in Guazulu Natal but throughout South Africa. That is, if the violence and the looting in the province is not swiftly brought under control. Joining me now to address the state of affairs is Dr. Stavros Nikolaou. Uh, he is from Business for South Africa. He is uh, chairman of the health group. A very good afternoon to you, Dr. Nicolau. There has been alarm bells that have been ringing from your side saying that if this unrest does not stop right now, that there are medicines that are likely to run in short supply. Which one specifically are you talking about? Tommy, firstly, good afternoon and thanks very much for having me on your show. Uh, there's multiple concerns. Let, let me just focus on two for the moment. The, the first is that because of the unrest and violence we've seen in KZN, there's been a suspension of the COVID vaccine rollout program. Um, this happens at a, at, at a very, uh, the timing is not good because we had significant momentum and acceleration around the vaccine rollout program in our country. By way of example, um, we peaked at 190,000 vaccines a day uh, at the latter part of last week. Of course, with what we've seen going on around the country, um, the numbers have dropped by around 40 to 50,000 doses during uh, Monday to Wednesday of this week. So the first impact has been um, the suspension of the vaccine rollout program, particularly in KZN. Of course, the consequences of that is that the fewer people we vaccinate, the more likely we are to have a, a more pernicious fourth wave. Now, none of us can afford a, a, another, um, a, another difficult fourth wave like we've had in this third wave. So that's the first impact. Um, hopefully, uh, law and order is restored soon in KZN. If that is the case, we will be able to make up the shortfalls, provided that this doesn't endure much longer. If there's a more longer effect in KZN and uh, certainly any other part of the country, then it is unlikely we will meet our target of vaccinating uh, almost the entirety of the 40 million people that need to be vaccinated by the end of December. That in itself comes with consequences, of course. So that's been the first uh, impact. The, the second impact is on medicine and pharmaceutical supplies. Um, regrettably, and with our deepest condemnation for the perpetrators, uh, two, sorry, three pharmaceutical warehouses were looted and or ransacked um, between Tuesday and Wednesday. These are the UPD facilities, the PharmEd facilities, and also uh, the Sipla facilities. Um, UPD on its own uh, distributes around a third of the medicines in KZN. So you can see that um, unless there is restoration, we're able to move product from other provinces of the country, then that province KZN is facing uh, some shortages, particularly of chronic medicines. This is not good again, uh, tell me because it, it will be a stretched hospital infrastructure in the private and public sector would have to start taking on patients with chronic conditions such as type 1 diabetics who require insulin that they might not be able to get. It, it includes cardiovascular patients and other chronic diseases. So this is not good and unless the situation is imminently brought under control, um, we will face these consequences, which are dire, unfortunately. The Durban Harbour is in itself very strategic. Uh, talk to us about the role that it plays, I guess, in, in the, the moving of, of goods, specifically for business uh, for South Africa. So, again, I've, I've focused more on the internal picture, that's vaccines and medicines and pharmaceutical security in the country. There is, of course, as you point out, another element here. That other element is the dependence on, on Durban port, which is the busiest port by far in our country. Um, the dependence of imported medicines and also imported active ingredients for local manufacturers to produce these products in the country. 
and and again there there seemed to have been an orchestrated attack on the on the port the Durban port and again if this is not brought under control imminently we could in the medium term face certain shortages of either finished medicines or raw materials particularly active raw materials that are required to produce our pharmaceuticals things like antiretrovirals and medicines that are key to ensuring a health security in our country. Dr. Nicolau, we are seeing now additional members of the SANDF being deployed um, in KwaZulu-Natal as well as as Gauteng. Assuming that there are no more unrest, assuming that these protests actually do come to an end and that we've seen the last of them, how quickly can we expect to see a turnaround and a replenishment of uh, essential medicines uh, after this uh, in entire debacle? If it's brought under control imminently, then I think the disruption factor will be minimized. Um, and, and when I talk about imminently, I'm, I'm referring to the next two, maximum three weeks. If it endures beyond that and uh, if it spreads to other parts of the country, other provinces, then I'm afraid there will be an impact. So I think we're very much dependent on, on the short term picture. Uh, yesterday, I participated yesterday evening in a, uh, a joint NEDLAC session with all the social partners, and I think this point was made repeatedly. Um, by my recollection, there were nine ministers in that meeting, and I think there's a clear understanding of how we need to firstly stabilize the situation in our country, and then secondly, how do we re-emerge from this uh, picture? And um, it, it's really important that I think the vaccine rollout program can be a rallying point from which we can rekindle our nation and rekindle the economy again as well. So it's, it's critical what you're saying, that there is, through the SANDF and the security cluster in general, we, we need to get a more visible presence of boots on the ground and a more impactful and effective uh, mechanism of how these troops and police are employed, uh, deployed in parts of our country. It's critical that we continue to protect particularly strategic health facilities in our country. Mm. We cannot to have hospitals attacked any further pharmaceutical uh, warehouses, and we cannot see uh, a, f a perpetuation of ransacking, looting, and burning down pharmacies. 70 were burned down in KZN in the last 48 hours. And, 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 that, and that certainly has been uh, disastrous uh, throughout. Uh, Dr. Nicolau, thank you very much uh, for your time. Thanks Dr. very much. Much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, that's Dr. Stavros Nicolau from Business for South Africa. He is chairman of the health group.